Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing great today. In today's lesson, we're going to look at different methods to create pluggable database and also tools to create pluggable database. Now, there are various methods you can use to create your pluggable database. You can create your pluggable database from the seed PDB. Remember, when we talked about the multi-tenant architecture, we mentioned that from Oracle release 12C and above, the concept of multi-tenant came into play. Now, for your database to qualify as a multi-tenant database, it must have a root container and then one pluggable database seed, which serves as a template to create other pluggable databases. So in a nutshell, a container which is a root and then one or more pluggable databases. But most of the times you have your pluggable database seed, okay, which is a template. So you can actually create other pluggable databases from this template, this seed template. Another way of creating your pluggable database is by cloning an existing pluggable database. So when you clone an existing pluggable database, you are invariably making an exact copy of that database, okay? And then also you can unplug a certain database from one container and then plug it to another container or the same container. Now, there are different tools with which you can use to create your pluggable database. The first one is your SQL Plus. You can create pluggable database from your SQL Plus environment. You can also use your SQL Developer to do this. You can also do this with your Enterprise Manager Cloud Control. That's if you have your, your database um, in the cloud. And then you can also use the Database Configuration Assistant. We're going to look at most of these methods to create pluggable database and explore some of the tools involved. Now, there are a few prerequisites which must be met before you can create a pluggable database. First, you must be in the root container. You must be in the root container and then you must have the create pluggable database privileges. And then the, the container database must be in read-write mode. So most of the times, it's either the user sees or anybody that has such privileges that can actually create a pluggable database. So let's head quickly to our lab environment and see how we can practicalize this. My server is up and running and my database is also up and running. And then I am connected through the SQL developer as the user sees, okay? So I've got a couple of scripts. We're gonna go through the steps one after the other. So you get to understand how to do this in real time, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is to create a directory where your data files will be saved, where your data files will be stored. So let me quickly get to my server. I'll open this folder and then I'll come to other locations. Computer, U01, app, Oracle, and then I'll go to Aura Data, okay, and then ORCL. Okay, you can see that we have ORCL PDB and then the PDB seed, which is the template with which we are going to use to create a pluggable database. Now remember, we created this pluggable database while we were installing the database, okay? This actually has our HRO sample schema. So if I get to open this, you see the data files for the pluggable database ORCL PDB. Okay, the same thing, if I open the PDB seed, you get to see the data files for the PDB seed. Okay, so I'm currently at this location and then I want to, I want to open a terminal, okay? I want to open a terminal and then I'm going to create a directory. So I'll take this. The name of the pluggable database we want to create is PDB Lab. 
pluggable database lab. Okay, so I've just taken the location and the name. I'll come here and then I'll paste it. So in a nutshell, you execute this command mkdi arrow slash u01 slash app slash oracle slash aura data slash orcl slash pdb lab. So this is where I want my data files saved. I'll enter. So you can see that our PDB lab directory has been created and it's empty. Okay, so let me minimize this and then I'll come back to our SQL developer. Now, the statement to create a pluggable database is very simple. It's not difficult. This is the standard statement from Oracle. Now, the first statement you have there is the create pluggable database statement, which is this create pluggable database PDB lab. That's the name of the pluggable database. And then the next thing you see is admin user PDB lab admin. This is the administrator that will actually manage this pluggable database identified by ebony123. This is the password that this admin user will use to log into the pluggable database. And then the roles is equal to DBA. So we are assigning the role DBA to this PDB lab admin. Okay. And then default table space is users. This is very important. Now, there's something you need to take note of. Data file is equal to slash u01 slash app slash oracle slash aura data slash orcl slash pdb lab slash users 01.dbf. And then the size is 250 megabyte. And then you have your auto extend on. So once this gets to this size, it will automatically extend the size of the data file and then a very important clause that comes with the create pluggable database statement is the file underscore name underscore convert okay what does this do this is actually used to determine how the database generates the names of files for the newly created database such as data files and wallet files okay so for the file underscore name underscore convert we have the location of the pluggable database seed, which is the template. So it's going to pick the data files from here and use it to create this new pluggable database. So what you're seeing here is convert everything that is here into this new location. I hope somebody is understanding me. So if I execute this statement, Create pluggable database statement. Let's execute and see. It'll take a while. Okay, so we can see pluggable database PDB lab created. Now our pluggable database has been created. Okay, so we need to confirm, we need to make sure that this pluggable database actually exists. So I'm going to run this query, select con ID name open mode from v dollar sign containers okay i quickly execute this and you can see cdb dollar sign roots pdb seed orcl pdb is in read write mode and then pdb lab is mounted which is our new pluggable database so it's not open yet so what are we going to do we're going to alter the session to move into the pluggable database okay so for that i'll execute this statement alter session set container equal to pdb lab i'll execute this and then you can see session has been altered now the next thing i want to do is to open the pluggable database pdb lab so I'll execute the statement, alter pluggable database, open. Okay, pluggable database, open, altered. Okay, okay so to know if the admin user is a common user 
or a local user. I'm going to execute this query, select username, default table space, common from DBA underscore users. Okay. So I'll just execute this. Wow. You can see the admin user, PDB lab admin. Default stable space is users, and he is not a common user because he is local to just this pluggable database known as PDB lab. Okay, so let's view the data files for the pluggable database by executing the following query select con ID, file number, name from V dollar sign data file. Okay, so we can see all the data files, PDB lab slash undo TBS.01. And now one of the things I want to show to you again, remember we created a directory where these data files will be saved. So let me go to my virtual machine, my server, and then let's get to that location immediately. Okay, so uh, PDB Lab, we can see we have the same data files as the PDB seed. If we come here and then open the PDB seed, you see that they are the same data files. So since we are creating the pluggable database, using the seed PDB as the template, it will generate the same data files like the PDB seed. So guys, this is just one method to create your pluggable database. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to connect to this database, how to log in and connect to this database, and then we'll look at other methods of how to create your pluggable database. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was interesting to you. If it was, kindly like it and share it widely. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so you don't miss out whenever I upload another valuable content. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.